Doug Gottlieb show here on Fox Sports Radio. Let's welcome in Will Golson. He joins us. And um, Will, I, I I know you like you lost your dad and your uncle to cancer, mm -hmm. right? I lost my dad to cancer, and the difference in the two of us is you're doing something about it. Uh -huh. right? You're you're doing something about it. what? Uh, why are you here in in terms of uh, fighting cancer? Uh, like you said, I lost my father, my uncle. My mom's been battling. One of my uncles survived though, so but um. Just to, to promote knowledge, uh, to prompt it, to get people to go out and get tested, get screened, uh, to break some fear, especially in my community, the black community. Uh, I guess a stigma on going to the doctor. Why? I, I have no idea. I think it's something about toughness, man. It's built into us to try to be tough, grit, bite the nail, keep going. One second. You got to get the mic close to your face real quick. Oh. That's okay. That's good? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, and... It, it's kind of similar. Like, my dad, I, he, he was sick for, like, a year. He didn't even tell me. Like, dude, really? Yeah. Like, like really? It, it's, a, it's a weird thing that, that it's like you're not showing a weakness by saying, hey, something I doesn't feel right. But for whatever reason, there is that stigma to it, isn't there? there? But think about this. How many times are you comfortable with having this conversation about cancer with another dude? Like, especially, like my father had prostate cancer, so he wasn't open enough to be like, all right, hey, man, I'm, something's going on. I need to go to the doctor. What do you think? It's not a, it's not. Well, guys don't have that level of conversations anyway, right? Well, we need to, we need I, to. I know we need to, but we, we do, there's all kinds of different things that guys like, we don't really, like you ask women like, oh, don't you guys talk about it? Like, no. Oh, yeah. We don't, we don't, we talk about football. Exactly. <laughs> football is, um, anyway, I hear on behalf of the ACS, it's American Cancer Society, the NFL's crucial catch campaign which works to promote the risk reduction and early detection in other words just like prostate cancer mm -hmm. go get checked get screened get screened yeah, yeah. go it's, get go get screened it's just that simple just it, go re it really is like you know once you're over 40 you got to get the test done right but mm -hmm. then you got to get the blood you should get your blood testing done every year yeah and then you do it and you're like that's it like yeah that's it you just run a plan on your blood it's really quick man really really quick uh tell me about you personally what did you think of your year I think it was productive. I think uh, my role changed. I uh, went from a starter to being a backup, but we got a lot of young guys, and they were rolling if you got a chance to watch us. But what's that like? Is it as, as, as I mean, honestly, how, how in terms of the emotional rewards for it? Oh, it's good. For me, like the type of man that I am, it is amazing to be able to see somebody go from practice and translate that to the game and know that you had somewhat of a, a little effect on it. Really? So you love that role? Don't and you want to be out there doing it more? Oh, when I get the opportunity now, yeah, I'm, the, the switch is flicked when I get on the field. But it's I don't know what it is about it, but just seeing like I, I, like the young guys that came in, yeah, I saw them when they weren't the best when they were real rookies, and then to see them transform into like real NFL players is crazy. How long does that take? Ooh, uh, it depends. I think I think it depends on all of the different circumstances you come into the game with. So there's no like week four, week six that they you can see the change, you can see it flip. It's when you get that second win, you hit a you hit a rookie wall for sure. You coming right from college, right to camp, right to preseason, right to the season, and then for us we went right to the playoffs. So once you pass that rookie wall, that mental knowing like oh I belong here, I can do this, the sky's the limit. What's Baker like? Amazing, bro. He's one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Real down to earth, real genuine guy, super competitive. Like, I walk through a dark alley with that guy. Why is it that everybody says that? Like, what is it about him? Like, he, because he's not, like, he's not 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He doesn't run a 4'4", four, four, right? He throws a good, but let's not act like he throws the best ball in the NFL. But it's the, it's the, that kind of quarterback, get behind me, and I can, I can, I can lead us, make you believe sort of thing. What is it, like, in a daily basis that makes guys, so many guys feel that way? For me, I can say that I like a guy who I know will knuckle up when it's time to knuckle up, and he's not going to shy away from that. So it's easy to follow somebody like that for me. Um, okay, what was Brady like? He was, man, that's somewhat in the same, I would say. Like, I would knuckle up with Brady, Have you? Too. By the way, you've been doing this, I think, what, 11 years in the league? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could you go through all the different quarterbacks? I think I can tell you every single quarterback I play with. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Let's, let's do this. Let's have a little fun. Hold on. Let me, let me bring up the Tampa page. Ooh. Tampa Bay football reference. Give me one second. Just, I just want to make sure I get, I get, it, I get it right. Okay. Uh, okay, so you're drafted in 2013. So you came in, okay, and uh, Lovey was your coach your first year, right? Nope. 
It was it? Greg Schiano. Schiano was your first, your yes, first sir. coach? Yes, sir. Now, he, he wanted every room at 68 degrees. Is that right? It was not a joke. <laughs> it at was 68. not a joke. <laughs> so you, you come out of Michigan State. Yep. And you come, and they're like, hey, man, this dude likes every room at 50, 68 degrees. Can I be honest? Another yeah. thing that I can share, the, my bed was tilted, where my feet were automatically elevated. And I had no idea what was going on for, like, the first day. I'm not going to complain. I'm wait, gonna, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So, but that was mandated by the coach? I don't think it was mandated. I just think it was just a sports science thing. Before sports science yeah, got real big, yeah, yeah. super into it. So, so you had your, your foot ele- elevated? Or my, my bed was sloped and my feet was elevated. Wait, your bed was sloped down and then your feet were up? So my head was down. Yes. Up. Yep. What was the purpose of that? I have no idea. I didn't ask. Wouldn't you be lightheaded when you wake up? I didn't ask a single question, man. I came to work to work. <laughs> okay, so your quarterback your first year, Greg Schiano, Greg Schiano uh, is who? Uh, Josh Freeman. And then didn't they trade Josh that year? And then it was Glennon? And, or Went what? from Josh to Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon to, you know, we had Josh McCowan. Yes. Then we had Jameis Winston. Yes. Then we had um, uh, Fitz, Pat- Fitz Magic. Yeah, Fitz Magic. After Fitz Magic, we got. We had Jameis most got, of the time. Yeah, oh, wait. So we went from. Fitz Magic to Jameis in the same year. So yeah. after Jameis, we got Tom. Yeah. After Tom, we got Baker. Uh, okay. So, uh, what about um, uh, what about Jameis? What's he like? He actually is a really down to earth guy, man. I think he's just misunderstood. He's he's one of the, the most coolest and genuine people. Like, it's hard for me to say anything bad about any of these guys. They they are genuine. All quarterbacks kind of ha- you have to have right? that qu- you have to have that quality, right? Yeah, a little bit of it's like a, a, a certain part of their charisma that gets the people to go around. They're like po- I'm telling you, they're like politicians, mm. and they're and I don't know if you've experienced this. Like if they came up and sit down here as an interview, and I don't know them from Adam. By the end of the interview, I'm like, man, I'm a fa- I, I want to be. Are we friends? Are we boys? Are we are we gonna go have beers? And then they like walk away, and then they go do it to somebody else. It's, it's an amazing talent that they have. I need that. Uh, yes, that's what politicians have. They have that same thing. You're like, I hate this guy. I can't stand this guy. Then you meet him, like, I kind of like that guy. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. I, I don't know. I never the, thought of it like that. It's it's honestly the exact same thing. They have that. It's the uh, I don't. It's the French call the je ne sais quoi. I don't know what. Je ne sais quoi. But, but what, whatever. What's it like to win a Super Bowl? Man, it's. And your year was nuts. Oh, because it was into. It was COVID. Mm. Okay, it was COVID. You had to go on the road. You win three on the road, right? Including in Green Bay. In Green Bay, right? Uh, take me back to the Green Bay game. Oh. When they're driving down the field late, okay? And I, I felt like you guys had Aaron Jumpy. Yo, I was going to say like the me. I'm in the game. I'm thinking about the score. The B gaps wide open. Wouldn't run it. Listen, I try to spin in and close it. I swipe at his ankles. He jumps over my hand. I'm like, oh, no, I missed the tackle. We about to lose. And he threw the ball. I was like, oh, man. Why would he wouldn't run there late? That was so weird. He did get the guy thinking about it. We was on him. Shaq was on him. JPP was on him. Sue was on him. Vita was on him. Everybody was like, it was a destructive game for the defense. Okay, so then you go home. You win a Super Bowl in the town that you live in. Yeah. What's that like? Yep. You know when I knew I was going to win? What? The beginning of the game, they got the Kansas City Chiefs hype. They did their, you know, pregame cry. Yeah. And they said, all right, everybody from Tampa. And we do Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. And it was the loudest I've ever heard in my life. Well, it helped they didn't have an offensive line that game either. It didn't matter to me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't put them out there, Coach. We just go against um, Brady got wasted. Were you, on, were, were you on one of those boats when he was, he was white boy wasted? Listen, it, it, it wasn't just Brady. His just was televised. I'll tell you now. <laughs> We didn't know that the media was going to be there after the boats. I don't think anybody knew. We got off the boats and we looked, and it's a, a plethora of cameras. And looking at the top of the boat, I'm looking at Vita. I look down. I said, man, I don't think I can do any of this. And then when you look on camera, you can see it in everybody's eyes. We just had the time of our life. Uh, yeah, the time. Had the time of, uh, last thing, you've been to the top of the mountaintop. Mm-hmm. You get to, to go through it. There's a lot that you got to go through, right? A, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And you see guys who they get towards the end of their career and they're just trying to get a taste of what you've been able to experience. Not the playoffs, but the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Is it worth it? Oh, my God, it's worth it. It's like being immortalized in the game. You'll never forget that game. 
not not nobody really. Nine points, thirty-one to nine against Pat Mahomes. And in your home ta- in your hometown. Yes, the first to do it in Tampa Bay. And you had the goat as your as your quarterback Ooh, as well. It was amazing, man. That was amazing. Hey, enjoy the victory lap. Thanks for what you're doing with the ACS. I really appreciate it. And thanks for being our guest. Appreciate it.